I'm Steve from This Earth With Cars and next to me is Ken Grazing's replica of BMC XOH276, one of the period factory built race cars. And today I'd like to bring you along with me when I hopefully start this car for the very first time. I took a look at some things yesterday and I made a little list of what we need to do. First things I want to tackle is fill the engine with water. There's no coolant in it right now. I'm only going to put water in it just in case something leaks. And then there's some fuel leaks at the carb. I did turn the fuel pump on and it started to leak. So we'll see if we can get that stopped. And if we don't have too many leaks there with both of those things, then we'll see if we can start it. Another thing that I noticed on the list is that there's no dash pot oil. So I'm going to take my SU dash pot oil and put some in here before I start it. Otherwise it's not going to run very well. I have the air cleaners on so I can't lift the piston up with my finger there, but I can use the lifting pin, lift it up a little bit so that I can put the oil in there. The correct amount of oil in the pistons would be when you're about to feel some resistance pushing this in just before you start to screw it down. Putting a little extra in there is better than not putting enough in there at all. Now I'll turn on the fuel pump and remind myself where the fuel leaks are. Okay, we've got one here on this banjo bolt. This banjo bolt back here is leaking as well. These take a Whitworth wrench. They're 7 16 Whitworth. Tighten these up. Let's turn the fuel back on, see if we have any other leaks. Okay, I hear a leak, but I can't see it. It must be underneath the car. I think the fuel leak that I'm hearing might be the fuel coming out of the float bowl vents. So the valves might be stuck right now. I think I'll give them a little tap with the hammer, see if they settle in. I think I'm going to have to put the car on the lift. Not sure exactly where the fuel is coming from. And it's leaking so quickly that I don't want to leave the pump running while I'm trying to look underneath the car. I'm underneath the car now. And here is one of the vent tubes for the carburetor. Very wet, so I think the fuel was coming out of there. And the other one is right here. It's also very wet. You can see some drips of fuel coming out of it right there. So I think what we might be having here is that the fuel pump is too powerful for the valves in the float bowls. And so we need to dial that down with a regulator to a reasonable pressure that the valves can keep up with. This car is fitted with a racing fuel cell. And so the fuel pumps are actually built into the fuel cell. You can see all the wires running into the fuel cell there right next to the two outputs. Those two outputs go to two fuel filters, which then are combined into one feed, which runs up to the engine. And I'm pretty sure that those fuel pumps are putting out way too much pressure for our float valves, and that's why it's leaking straight out of the vent tubes. This car is fitted with a Malpasi fuel regulator and fuel filter combination. So if I want to turn the fuel pressure down, at least the pressure going to the carburetors. I can take this blind nut off and I can adjust the fuel pressure right here. Now it is possible that the fuel pumps in the fuel cell are too powerful, that this regulator is not going to be powerful enough, that the spring in it is just not powerful enough to be able to withstand the pressure from those pumps. And by the way, only one of those pumps is running at a time. There's a toggle switch that you can flip to pump one or pump two. But I think it's worth a try to adjust the adjusting screw and see if we can get the pressure turned down.
This is the locking nut that locks the adjustment into position. Usually when you're adjusting one of these regulators, you would only turn this one half turn at a time. But in this case, it's being so overpowered that I'm going to go a bit more. In fact, I'm tempted to take the screw to its limit and see if the regulator is even powerful enough to stop the pressure from the pumps. Now with the screw completely out, this regulator is going to be working as hard as it can to stop the pressure from the pump. Let's turn the fuel pump on and see if it's still overpowering the float valves. Okay, we're in luck. The fuel pump is on and it's not leaking fuel. So that means we can start to screw this back in. And it's leaking already. So this regulator may not be powerful enough for these pumps. The adjustment is going to be so fine that it may be unreliable. Okay, right here is as far as I can take it in without it overpowering the float valves. I'll tighten it down right here and see if it stays. Now obviously our blind nut is going to look a little silly on there. But at least now we can go on with trying to start the car and we can work out any bugs with this later. Let's give it a go and see what happens. I've got nothing. It's almost like there's no spark at all because I'm pretty sure that it would have wanted to kick over if it could. Okay, so the ignition wire has been kicked off of the distributor. So I just need to connect that back up. Let's try this again. pretty strange it's definitely firing but it's only trying to run when the starters going when I let off the starter I can see that it still does have ignition there's a light inside that flashes okay what I've done is I've removed the tack signal this has a Farrington RCA 50 tachometer in it and I just want to make sure that the tachometer is not interfering with the ignition coil. Let me show you what I'm seeing on the inside of the car. You can see all of this equipment that's been installed in this car. So this is a lot more complicated than a stock original Austin Healey Sprite. Now, if we turn the ignition on, Here's my fuel pumps down here. We'll leave that off. Let's hit the start button. This blue light here is flashing, as well as that green one right there is just dimly flashing. Now this is a bright lights indicator, so if I turn the lights on and then I hit the dimmer switch, you can see that blue light comes on. So that means that somewhere in the system, the ignition is back feeding through a few of the other electrical items. This could take some time to track down. So I think right now what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to hot wire the ignition coil so that it is not connected to the rest of the electrical system at all. I'm going to start with just hard wiring the power to the coil. So I'll connect that there and I'll connect this right here, which is our power coming straight from the battery. I've hot wired both wires to the coil. I've disconnected this wire here. I've taken both fuses out and still when I crank it, it back feeds to that blue light. So for my own sanity, I think I'm going to check and make sure that I have spark on each of these cylinders because I'm not sure what is going on here. 
We have good spark there. Good spark there. Oh boy. Make sure you're not touching the metal of the uh, spark plug wires because that gives you a bit of a shock. A good spark there. Okay, they are all firing. I'm gonna take the air cleaners off, see if I can spot anything in here. I will need to put the inner bolts back in to hold the bracket for the choke mechanism. Okay, I decided to take the feed wire to the carburetors off, and as you can see, there's no fuel coming out of here. So that means that the regulator is turned down enough that is stopping the fuel flow completely. So for right now, I'm gonna grab one of my drip tanks and let's get the fuel from that. Instead of using this regulator, which is probably not going to work with these fuel pumps. Okay, I've connected my fuel bottle and I still have fuel leaking onto the ground out of this rear carburetor. These banjo bolts are quarter inch Whitworth. Oh, well there's the problem. So as you can see, sitting inside the float bowl is the valve. Maybe when this car was transported up here, it uh, came loose and fell into the float bowl there. Let's take the other one off and check that one. This one appears to be okay. Okay, let's open the fuel up again and see if it leaks this time. Fuel's open. I don't hear anything. Okay, so that's been solved. These carbs are many times larger than what came on an Austin Healey Sprite. So I think I'm going to rich in both of these carbs up quite a bit, hoping that we get enough fuel because there's not going to be a lot of airflow moving through these carbs. So these may not be working completely correctly. been a rough day uh, I might have to end the video right here if you're running h4s on an Austin Healey Sprite with a 948 let me know what needles you're running in those carbs I tried to get h4s to run properly on Ken's Sebring coupe but I ended up having to switch back to the HS style carburetors I'm not sure that the 948s that Ken is trying to use are large enough engines to have these carburetors on them. When you're building custom built cars like this, sometimes things like this happen. It takes a lot longer to engineer and to work out all the bugs of all these parts that were never made to work together. So if you'd like to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.